So it's time to unpack all things Anthony Davis with the three of you. And, J.J., uh, I want to start with you here. So if Davis does play tonight, where are we going to see his impact the most? Dave mentioned it. The biggest impact is defensively. Lakers had a two back-to-back -back top five defenses. They were number nine before Anthony Davis got hurt this year. Mm. They've slid all the way to 19th. The biggest question mark to me is, can he start to make jumpers? Can he recapture that magic that he had in the bubble when he made 38% three uh, during the playoff run? He's been one of the least efficient jump shooters in the league this season. So that, that's the bigger question mark to me. But the impact is for sure on the defensive end. Absolutely. I mean, they were the number three ranked defense, I believe, uh, Perk, when they were able to win a championship. Mm -hmm. So his impact tonight, do you think it needs to be defensively? Yeah, I just think you just need to go out there and be the best version of him, right? Like, sitting on the sideline, you have a different appreciation for the game. You also could, could see where you could impact the game. And you start to miss the game. So I think AD, I just want to see him go out there and play with passion. We already know that he could go out there and get you a cool 24 and 11 in his sleep because he's just that talented and athletic. But I want to see AD take his passion to another level. And I think we're going to see that tonight. Being away from the game, I think he's going to come back with a different type of energy and mindset. Well, and Richard, you won a championship with LeBron James. What role does he play in Anthony Davis's return here? Well, I, I think, you know, for LeBron, it's all, you know, when he was playing the center and he was doing the things, running the floor, trying his best. It was Some of it was fake hustle, but he was doing his best. He was basically just out there saying, like, hey, look, when Anthony Davis comes back, this is what we expect from you in, in this space. Do I think that, like, Anthony Davis is going to come out and be the offensive player that, that he was in the bubble? I don't think yet. You know, he's missed a month and a half because of injury. But ultimately, and we're all on the same thing, defense is something you can control. Your effort, your intensity, your communication, that is control. Making jumpers, somewhat out of your control, but well, not maybe not for JJ, <laughs> but, you know, that's out of your control. But defense, you can do it. So if he comes out here and tries to control what he can control, the Lakers need that defensive intensity because if you're giving up less points, you don't have to score as many points, and mm. that can be key to their success. No, I'm with you. I, I think the Lakers also got to do a great job of establishing him. As a big man like, you know, A.D., in order to get him going defensively, sometimes you got to feed him. You know what I mean? You got to stroke his ego a little bit. We used to do it with Serge Ibaka. Seriously, Serge Ibaka in Oklahoma City. We made sure in the first quarter we got Serge going. You know why? Because we knew that Serge Ibaka was going to go out there and get us 10 to 12 blocks like he was capable of doing 10 to 12 blocks it. in a game? He did that. Go pull up. In Oklahoma City, surge was different. Yes. I know. Uh, but okay, so but I'm just saying. But, but that's, like, just, like, that's like, that's like, that's like once, maybe twice in his career. But no, like, that's not. You're saying that no, that's really not. You want to bet some push-ups? Oh, the push-ups. You want to bet some push-ups? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But see, look, here's the thing, too. Braun, I, I heard him in his post-game interview talking about how he's in the zone right now. He's mm. not changing anything. I understand that. But he's going to have to change up a little bit and kind of stroke AD because for the simple fact that if you don't change up and you don't get the best version of Anthony Davis, you're not going to do nothing. Mm, well, speaking of energy players, we've spent so much time on this show talking about Russell Westbrook. And there's a great piece by Ramona Shelburne that's up on ESPN.com just about how he sort of ebbs and flows and maybe more so than anyone else feeds off the energy of the Lakers and the players around him. So, J.J., what does AD's return, how does that impact Russ specifically? I wish there was a good answer for this. <laughs> oh, welcome, J.J. I wish there was a good answer There's for this. There's not. Look, I, I've been saying this all season. Uh, the pieces on this team do not fit well together, mm -hmm. okay? And when you have two guys who are not particularly good jump shooters playing a lot of minutes together, that leads to inefficient offense. Right. That's just a fact. And the other thing I've said all season, the, Ru the, the Lakers traded for who they got. This is who Russell Westbrook is. There's nothing he's done differently. You know, there was the, the viral clip the other day of him shooting off the side of the backboard. That's his spot. He's above league average from that spot. This is who he is as a player. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and it's, who, it, it's who he's always been. But I will say this. Anthony Davis's percentage from three dropping, right? That's one of those things that affects Russell. And I think some, some of that could be Russell because teams are like, we're going to stay attached. Right. We're going to stay attached to, to Anthony Davis. We're not going to give him the space because we're okay with Russ going downhill. It was one of the reasons why when I, when I was in Dallas and Dirk and Rondo, everybody remembers that trade where Rondo didn't fit. Dirk really struggled with Rondo because Dirk was used to Steve Nash. He was used to Jason Terry. He was used to these guards that can score. So when they would start to score, 
or you would give help, Dirk would get the spot. They would just stay attached to Dirk, let Rondo go, so it didn't it didn't flow as well together. And I think Anthony Davis's shooting struggles could have a small bit to do with Russ because he's not getting that space because people are allowing Russ to do what they want. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out why can't the high pick and roll work with Russell and Anthony Davis. You know, like it, it did. Like, we saw a sample size with Russ and LeBron James, and it worked perfectly fine. Uh. Well, LeBron was setting the screen, rolling, and Russ was hitting them. He was getting layups or dunks. Why can't that happen with Russell Westbrook and Anthony Davis is beyond me. Like, Well, uh, to, to your point, Perk, I think that's a great question. But how much of AD as the screener is he as a roller? He, to me, he pops more, right? And uh. so if he's shooting – at an inefficient clip from the mid-range and an inefficient clip from three, and all he's doing is popping. So I, I agree with you, but when when Russ and LeBron were working, LeBron was rolling and then making plays well, out of that. And that's what Jay, AD, tell AD, AD to, to, do. to roll to the damn paint. That's well, what you're saying. Perk, can I borrow your glasses just, just, just <laughs> oh, for one no, second? Uh, not these, to, not these fresh the, Oh, those are those are two friends. Well, I, I wanted to because you know I, I was doing a little bit of studying, and my 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 scholarly self over here, uh, ten. Ten times, ten blocks. You were saying how many times? How many times did you say he got that all the no, time? No, I said he was getting that, and no, like he got that. Like we know he I, got that three times. Okay, but we. I, <laughs> that's I'm, that's a, I'm over, just saying no, it's I not just, like but, all okay, the time. Saying, it was three times okay, that he I'm did saying, that. But what I'm saying is, go look and see how many times he had over five blocks or seven blocks, Malik. But what that's I'm not what. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 see how many times? No, no, no. I did not say per game. I did not say Serge Ibaka was getting. 10 to 12. Um, all right, we're going to need that clip. We're going to need to run it back. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.